police are warning about counterfeit prescription drugs laced with fentanyl. Officers say they are blue tone pills with a distinct letter M stamped on them made to look like prescription drugs. The counterfeit pills have been linked to multiple suspected overdoses, which turned out to be deadly. Now, Virginia's attorney general, Jason Mierens, is taking the lead in the One Pill Can Kill campaign to campaign awareness about deadly overdoses. There is a public service announcement about this. Here it is. Every day, a silent killer murders four Virginians. Drug overdoses. To keep our loved ones safe, we have to talk to them about the dangers of drugs, whether it's opioids, heroin, or counterfeits laced with fentanyl. So do your part. Be their protector, because one pill can kill. This morning, we want to welcome in the Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Jason Miares. Uh, Attorney General, it's good to see you. Uh, obviously, this has been in the headlines a, a lot lately. Uh, what are we dealing with and why are we seeing this surge now? Well, I mean, tragically, you're having four Virginians die each day from overdoses, and it's overwhelmingly fentanyl and opioids. And nationally, we've lost 100,000 Americans to these overdoses. And you hear these numbers, it's hard to put it into context. Uh, we lost 50,000 men and women in Vietnam over the course of 15 years. So this is the equivalent of two Vietnam wars in just 12 months. And we are seeing a flood of fentanyl. A lot of it is coming over the southern border. And what's so hideous about it is people don't think they're taking fentanyl. Uh, I had a DEA agent just share with me last week photographs and new evidence that they're placing it even in Flintstone pills. And what happens is people are at a party. We saw in Prince William County, uh, tragically, a 15 and a 14 year old who thought they were taking a Percocet. It was fentanyl. I, I heard another incident in Warren County where they thought it was a Xanax. And so they're lacing it in so many, um, uh, so many different pills and maybe they don't realize it. But it's a particularly hideous. Uh, enough fentanyl on this fingernail would kill every single person in that studio that you're sitting in right now, Tom. It's that dangerous. It's that potent. It's 50 times more powerful than heroin. Mm -hmm. And what's even scarier is the most recent intelligence shows that uh, some of the street fentanyl that is now a derivative of it is actually Narcan resistant, mm -hmm. which, you know, Narcan is able to bring uh, people back and has saved countless lives. And so uh, my fear is it's only going to get worse. And so during this holiday season, uh, when families are gathering there's a lot of families right now tragically that have an empty chair because of someone's life that was cut too short i, and I don't know, such a I, I don't know anybody who does not know or have had this affected in their, their own family attorney general you know one of the questions that a lot of people want to know about this is where is this stuff coming from well, there was enormous amount of pressure for years. It was coming from China, and there was enormous amount of pressure on China to ban the export of fentanyl. We were able to successfully do that. The problem is that China continues to export the chemicals, and they they come in overwhelmingly through the Mexican cartels. This chemical warfare is what it is. It's why I joined a bipartisan letter that I, I helped to lead to the Biden administration to ask him to declare fentanyl WMD because it is taking that many lives. It's unlike anything we've ever seen. We see the life expectancy in some communities, even in Virginia, actually go down. It's almost directly tied to what we call these deaths of despair. And, and what's really kind of compounding some of this is, you know, if you've ever had a loved one that has dealt with addiction or depression, they will tell you that that uh, social isolation is the worst box you could be put in. And that's what we did uh, the last two years to kind of get through COVID-19. It's been a tough couple of years for our American family uh, nationally. And we're seeing skyrocketing rates of mental health and depression and addiction. A lot of that is intertwined. And so um, we're trying to do everything we can. I'm a big believer the best way to fight bad information is with good information. That's why we launched the One Pill Can Kill uh, public service announcement. We applaud our media, our partners in the media that are that are highlighting this mm -hmm. because we want to save lives. And in, and listen, I think one of the misnomers is somehow it's weak to ask for help. If you have a loved one, or if you yourself are watching right now and you're dealing with addiction, mm -hmm. you're a hero by asking for help. You'll be heroes in the eyes of your family members and your loved ones if you just admit, "I need help." That is the most powerful, brave thing you can do. And we want to get you back on that addiction, uh, on that on that recovery path, not the addiction path, because this is an amazing country. As a child of an immigrant, I'll tell you, we want you to get recovered. We want you to be able to live uh, self-sufficient lives, chase your dreams. In America, it's not about your past, it's about your future. That's well, what makes this country, talk, I love to say, we're a nation of second chances. Well, Attorney General, let's talk about that, because last week, the governor in uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, at a memorial, talked about the need for more 
mental health services in the Commonwealth of Virginia. This is something that a lot of people are talking about. Is there going to be a push, you know, when the General Assembly returns in January to get more money to these kinds of programs that you're talking about here this morning to get people this health so they're not turning to these you know, pills that they're just finding on the street? Yes, there is. I think you're going to see a record investment by this governor uh, in the mental health realm in multiple fronts. Uh, we not, he and I have talked about it. He has addressed it publicly. Uh, it is something that gravely, gravely concerns him. And um, you can't separate the issue of gun violence and these horrific shootings that we're seeing from mental health. In fact, 60 percent of all gun deaths nationally in this country are suicides. And so we want to tackle mental health and flood the zone as much as possible with as many resources as possible. Um, because right now we want, here's the scariest thing is that somebody needs help and they have to delay getting help. We do not want that to happen. We want them to have the resources to get help. And if you need help, that first step I know we, is the uh, hardest step, but yeah. your family will be so grateful that you did. We want to give people more information on the One Pill Can Kill campaign. You can go to www.virginiarules.org. Attorney General of Virginia, Jason Muras, thanks for joining us this morning.